And there's more in store for Pakistan as the Afghan situation worsens. On the 2nd of July, U.S. troops fled from Afghanistan. They vacated the Bagram Air Base in the middle of the night, left Afghanistan to fend for itself against the Taliban, left Afghanistan's neighbors to undo the damage done by a 20-year-long war, America's failed war. Twelve days later, this is what Afghanistan looks like. The Taliban controls most of the country. They claim that they control 85% of it. They control or contest all the border crossing points along Iran, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, China, and now even Pakistan. Taliban's latest gain is the border crossing of Spin Boldak. This is along the Afghan frontier with Pakistan. The Afghan government denies losing control of this border, but security sources in Pakistan say that the Taliban flag is flying over the frontier town. There's no way we can verify this. But like we've been telling you all week, the Taliban's goal is one of strategic control. This involves encircling major cities, taking control of the border, seizing dry ports, stopping the revenue from reaching the government, the Afghan government, and filling its own coffers. Spin Boldak is the Taliban's biggest strategic gain so far. Why do I say so? Number one, at least 900 trucks cross this frontier every day. So you can imagine the kind of revenue the Taliban commands at one border alone. Reason number two, Spin Boldak provides the Taliban a direct access to the Pakistani province of Balochistan. Why is this province important? Because this is where the Taliban has its reserve fighters, also its top leadership. Reason number three, there is a highway that connects Spin Boldak to the Karachi port. Why is that important? Because it helps the Taliban with its heroin trade. Pakistan says it is well prepared to deal with the spillover effect of the Taliban's rampage, but the world knows better than taking it at face value. Inside Afghanistan, violence is on the rise. Tonight, we have another video for you. This one was shot from inside a moving Humvee. Inside the car are Afghan special forces. They're driving through the province of Kandahar, a province that the Taliban has taken control of. What you'll see next are the forces coming under attack of heavy machine gun fire. Here's a sample of the kind of violence being unleashed by the Taliban. These images can be disturbing. We advise viewer discretion. <laughs> This is Afghanistan, a country of 32.9 million people, all of whom live with a legacy of war. These are people whose future is now under the control of the Taliban. This is a country where troops are being executed and attacked in broad daylight, where districts are falling like a pack of cards. The country's minorities are either being forced to convert to Islam or leave. And this is already happening in the northern province of Badakhshan. The minority Kyrgyz have fled to Tajikistan, so have many Afghan troops, at least 1,000 of them. More Afghans are likely to seek refuge in Pakistan, Iran and Tajikistan. At least 700,000 Afghans are expected to cross over to Pakistan. More than 1.4 million Afghans already live in Pakistan. Islamabad says it is in no position to accept more refugees. Experts say Afghan refugees will also try to take shelter in Europe. Though it may be a long journey, many are likely to enter Italy via Libya. There are at least 2.6 million registered Afghan refugees living in different parts of the world. They make up the second largest group of asylum seekers in Europe. The continent's policymakers are now facing a fresh refugee challenge, as are Afghanistan's neighbors. And this is all thanks to America's policy failure. The pullout of U.S. troops was a mistake, says former U.S. President George W. Bush. It was under Bush, remember, that America invaded Afghanistan. Now he says, and I quote, Afghan women and girls are going to suffer unspeakable harm. This is a mistake. They're just going to be left behind to be slaughtered by these very brutal people. And it breaks my heart. Well, 10 days and 20 years too late. Afghanistan does not need the outpour of sympathy from its invaders. It needs solutions, ways through which peace can be restored in this country torn by war. 
Kabul has sought help from India. Earlier today, Vyond spoke to Farid Mamunze. He is the Afghan envoy to India, and he told us that Afghanistan is looking for India's support in peace talks. But should they fall apart, Kabul will be seeking military aid from New Delhi. Listen to this. Where India can help uh, the Afghan Republic, the Afghan peace negotiating team, to reach a peace settlement should the peace process produce no results uh, in, in the weeks and months ahead, then India would naturally be a place where we would seek more military and security assistance from. New Delhi is doing its bit to ensure there is peace in the neighborhood. India's external affairs minister S. Jay Shankar recently met his Afghan counterpart, Hanif Atmar. Dr. Jay Shankar assured Atmar of India's cooperation in achieving a political settlement in Afghanistan. Earlier this evening, the Indian minister also met his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi on the sidelines of the SCO summit in Dushanbe, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, SCO. Afghanistan was on the agenda. Reports say the Taliban and the government of Afghanistan may soon meet in Qatar. This could be as early as the 16th of July, that's day after tomorrow. There's also buzz about a possible meeting before Doha, one that Pakistan wants to organize. How do we know this? Through a tweet from Mohammad Uber Daudzai. He's Afghanistan special envoy to Pakistan. On the 13th of July, he tweeted about a possible trip ahead of the Doha talks. We'll be keeping track of what Pakistan tries next. You see, Afghanistan is a crisis of Washington's making, no doubt. But Islamabad fueled it. So any moves by Pakistan now must be watched closely. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.